Duncan, the teams are already out. We're not far off from action. Talk us through that all-important team news, starting with the injury-ravaged Tampanese Rovers. Well, Jürgen Rapp has had an absolute nightmare in picking a side. Injuries, suspensions, even Hafiz Abu Sujat not cleared to play yet for the Rovers. 3-4-3 three, three it is. It is the trust, tried and trusted formation for Jürgen Rapp. A back three of Mustafa Faruddin, Daniel Bennett and Madhu Mohana gets his first start of the season for Tampanese Rovers. He replaces Irfan Najib, who is out with injury. A midfield four of Zulfatmi, Suzliman, Yase Hanapi, Amirul Ali and Shamir Azik. A lot expected from Zulfatmi and Shamir down the wings. But it is the front three that really, really excites everyone for Tampi Rovers. Jordan Webb, Fazrul Nawaz and Rio Taro Magumi. And those three need to be firing today if they had to get the vital three points. As you got out of coach Yoshinaga in your interview, Duncan, no. Adam Swandy, how does his absence affect their starting at Evan? Let's look at Nagata. Well, for Alberex, it is going to be 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1, four, one, one, how you want to look at it. A back four, a tried and trusted back four as well for them. Hiroshi Kamata at right back, left back Kenya Takahashi, Shuhei Sasahara and Kaishu Yamazaki, the two central defenders. It is a cross midfield four, Riku Moriyasu, Daiki Asaoka, captain Wataru Murofushi, who was rested against Young Lions. And Ryujiro Yamanaka comes in on the left and he is the direct replacement. For Adam Swandi, up front, Shuhei Yoshino and Taku Morinaga, the little magician. Well, Jordan went three goals this season. He leads the way for Tampanese Rovers, but I'm fascinated to see how Megumi gets on tonight. I know there are other Japanese players littered around the sides outside of Albert Nagata in the Singapore Premier League, but I don't think there's any of those Japanese players that have the same flair as Megumi, and I'm sure it's an extra special night for him at home at Tampanese Rovers, our Tampanese hub, to try and prove his mettle against the Japanese side that are taking the league by storm. Absolutely, and he has been firing. He has been struggling with injury earlier on in the season. He's finally got... A little bit of minutes, Jürgen Rapp was very careful to give him a little of minutes, little by little, 60 minutes, 70 minutes, and then finally giving him a full match. I think now he's really firing. Of course, they've had about two weeks to prepare for this game, that game against Home United. They were supposed to play, being pushed back until next month, though. They've had plenty of preparation, but not helped with all the injuries and suspensions. Of course, that game that they forfeited, well, I say forfeited, they agreed to postpone against home to help Home's quest in the AFC, which actually paid dividends for their cross city rivals Tampanese means they are now three games behind in terms of matches played with Albrecht so whopping 14 points but do the maths they win the three games in hand it becomes only five and they win this one and it potentially becomes only two points so there are the implications for Tampanese Rovers tonight they simply must win I don't think a draw will be enough for them Duncan and the fact the symbolic fact that Albrecht have now played everyone once and beaten everyone once no real scares I suppose you could look back to that game that they needed the own goal against Ballastia to get through. But other than that, it's been plain sailing for them, hasn't it? Tampanese need to test them and they need to beat them tonight. Well, they did struggle as well against Geelang International. Uh, held very well, uh, and even by Haukang United, a single goal. The controversy with Ta Kenya Takahashi and Nazru Nazari as well. But yes, I think very, very important for Tampanese Rovers to lay down the market. They did lose 2-1 in the Community Shield. And it was not as close as this uh, scoreline suggests. We're just going to get the camera to zoom out a bit because look at the formation Tampanese that take you from the kickoff. Now, I might be reading too much into this, Duncan. You're the former professional footballer, but just look how offensively minded they are. Straight from the kickoff, they're playing five across the halfway line. Is that a sign of things to come? Well, Jürgen Rapp said the best way to approach this match is to play with no fear. And I think Tampanese Rovers have to play without fear. Yes, they're playing against the champions. Yes, they're playing against a team that has not tasted defeat yet this season. But you're at home, they have a great home record and it's time to show what they're made of. They have a dreadful recent record though, unfortunately for them. Against Albrex, they've lost their last seven straight. Four in the league, three in the cup. You have to go back to the Premier League in 2016, the S-League as it was then for the last Tampanese victory, albeit that was a victory against a team that were on their way to a league challenge straight away. Murafushi back from injury, delightful ball inside to Yamanaka and Yamanaka with an early opportunity going a begging. 
Well, Yamanaka, given too much time and too much space, his run wasn't really tracked. Murafushi doing great to pull away Amirul Ali and using the space left by Amirul Ali, Yamanaka with time to get a shot away. There's a suspicion on occasions that Jordan Webb has gone missing in the really big games. He likes to shine against teams when they're knocking them over 3 4 5 nil. Great opportunity for him to prove his worth on the opposite flank to Megumi. I think he's benefited in some games this season from the focus being on Megumi more so than he. There's another win in the air for Alvarex. They're starting this game very strongly. Not like a side that have got the comfort zone of a 14-point gap between the team they're playing tonight and themselves. Well, we spoke about Jordan Webb, and I think he's taking up a very different position, a different position that he's usually played for Temis Rovers, almost as a central midfielder today. So very interesting, yeah, very interesting to see how he will have an impact from central midfield. Obviously, always does his best work down the wings. Can you uh, enlighten me why Farrell now as we'll be wearing tights as we get a look at Kazuka Yoshinaga? Why would be Fazul now has wearing tights, Duncan? You're the ex-professional in the ranks here. I think it's just compression tights that, that players wear nowadays. I think you'll see maybe Yasi Hanapi similar with his attire. Well, if he scores a couple of goals tonight, I'm sure that the Tampanese Rovers fans won't mind if he's wearing a 2-2. Now, here's a run from Hanapi, looking for it over the top. The flag stayed down. It comes out to Noaz. And here's an opportunity for Jordan Webb. He has to go back to Mustafik, the old favourite, Mustafik to Bennett. Benefit now out to Madhu. Madhu on this near side, chested down by Fazal Noaz, but chested straight to the Albrecht skipper, Waturu Murafushi. And Albrecht's breaking and breaking with some purpose here. Down the left-hand side, it's Yamanaka. Yamanaka's got the overlapping runner. Yamanaka might decide to come inside here to the byline. Too heavy a touch, out for a goal kick. Well, Kenya Takahashi giving the option of the overlap, and I'm not sure he would be going on the overlap too many times if Yamanaka isn't going to pick him out. I've been there before as a left back, busting a gut to go on the overlap. The player just ignores you. Another game in progress this evening is at the National Stadium. The second of those back-to-back 8.30 -back kickoff games at the National Stadium. What a game it was yesterday. Ballester scoring twice in the last three minutes to beat home. And tonight, Warriors taking on Gaylang. Gaylang looking to build on that win against Haugang. Any update, by the way, while we get a quick lull, three and a half minutes in, on Philip Orr overnight after that latest defeat. Do you think Haugang going to persevere with Philip? I think they will persevere with him. Uh, he's done well last season for them, got them up to sixth position. So I'm sure he'll be given time to turn things around. But the longer it goes without a victory, the more, uh, the more in danger he is of losing his job. I said to say that. You can see Megumi in that number nine shirt. It's out of your picture at the moment, but he, I'm sure he's going to want to try and involve himself in some big spaces that might appear down this right-hand side. Alvarez's intentions are quite clear early, which should make for an attractive game of football. They're going to try and win this. That looked like it had gone out of play to me. Play on to the call. Comes back to Daniel Bennett. In front of Bennett is Faimi. Here's Farrell Noaz. Oh, it's just not good enough, is it? Disappointing. There's no involved and happy, but it goes out of play. That's a weak touch this time from Asioka. Gives Tampanese a sniff of goal here. And that's going to be a nice free kick won by Zulfami. Nice and cheap. And this is range for someone to have a pop, Duncan. From that kind of angle, you're almost... Better off going for a pop than trying to get a cross in. Well, the last time we were here, we saw Yase Hanapi with superb delivery in the match against Haugang United. And I'm sure he's taken an interest in this. And give a little tester to Yosuke Nozawa, who's not really been tested throughout the season because they haven't, he hasn't been needed because they've just been so dominant in attack, Albrecht Negata. played more games than everyone else, but incredibly, their four goals conceded isn't the best defensive record in the division. Do you know who has the best defensive record in the division? Tempe's Rovers. Correct, only conceded three, albeit they've played three games left. So Hanapi, Kenyase Hanapi, set our Tamini Sab on fire. Five and a half minutes in. Hanapi dinks it over. That might still come to Dan Bennett. Dan Bennett's going to need help here. He tried to win the corner and instead he started a counter-attack for Alvarex. Frantically covering his Hanapi. Did a good job there. Pressured them. Magumi also trying to invoke some pressure. This is going to be one that has to be dealt with. 
battling for that ball was Takumara Naga. The throw goes the way of Champanese. So six minutes gone. And already both sides showing in tacking intent. The question is, have Tampanese got the quality with their injuries and absentees to back up that desire, which no doubt is there to try and win this football match and breathe life back into the Singapore Premier League title race? Could have been a push on the back of Noaz there, referee plays on. And this is what they have to do. Harass and Harry. This is what Haogang did so brilliantly in Jurong East a couple of weeks ago. Oh, he's got goal side. Has Yamanaka. Gets it back to Morinaga, who's dropped very deep, as is his one from time to time. Asioka. Looking classy across the midfield four at the moment. Albrex in their change kit of all white. Back to Morafushi. Missed the game in midweek. Oh, that was a rare miscontrol from Morinaga. And a first chance for Megumi to shine, but he is forced to go back to Madu. He brings in Daniel Bennett. Oh, that's a real tester. Shazwan there, dicing with danger. Well, Shazwan is very much a left footed goalkeeper, and that back pass was given to him on the wrong foot. He needed to adjust. Although in modern football, you need to be comfortable with both feet. say that, Duncan. At this level, you can't really use that as an excuse anymore, can you? Asioka, runners ahead of him. Comes to Tashahara. Oh, that was half a chance. It's still not cleared. Morinaga pulls it back. Yamanaka. Gets it out to Takahashi. We know he gets it from distance. And still, they come with Yamanaka. And there's the opening goal. Tabanese, quite frankly, ripped to shreds inside eight minutes. And the three-peat seeking Albrex Nagata have carved them open inside eight minutes. Well, who needs Adam Swandi when you have a real zero Yamanaka in the side? Tampanese Rovers defense in sixes and sevens, not clearing the danger. Well done to Taku Morinaga for keeping the ball alive. And sets up Yamanaka, who dances his way through the Tampanese defense and smashes a shot past Shazwan Buhari. Well, that makes grim reading for Tampanese. It wasn't as if they were caught in a counter attack there. They were just absolutely torn to pieces and open play. And I tell you what, for a side that are 14 points clear of their nearest rivals in Tampanese, with all due respect to Badastir Kaus, I don't want to sound offensive to them. That was really disheartening. And it's the fact that Albrecht have started the game in such positive fashion, Duncan. They fear no one in Singapore. That's half the problem, isn't it? Well, they're playing with confidence because they've beaten everyone already in the first round. They're now the ninth game going into the second round. Oh, look at this over the top. Apologies for cutting you off, Dunk, because Kamata's back. It gets to Morinaga. Nearly to Morinaga. He took the other option, Kamata. But look how forward he is. It's not starting very well for Tampanese Rovers here. Morinaga drops deep. They've got runners all over the place. Look at the movement from this side, Duncan. We've got a great vantage point at our Tampanese side. We don't have that at all the grounds we visit. And it really is a joy to behold the movement off the ball from Albrecht Nagata, isn't it? They're just completely almost playing a different game at times to the other Singaporean sides. And, and, uh, and the difficulty that Tampanese Rovers have, especially the defenders, with all the movement, do you follow your, your, your marker? Or do you just stay there and leave him alone? And I think that's the problem where you have to stick a twist as a Tempest Rovers defender. Of course, when Haogang, who put up the best performance of all the eight other teams against them so far this season, had their narrow 1-0 defeat. With all due respect to Ballester, who I know missed a penalty and only lost 1-0. The Haogang performance was better when you actually take it on close examination. Oh, Megumi's picked one up there. Megumi, flag's going to go up there. Surely it does. That was offside, and Noaz has got to do better than that because they're disciplined this defensive back four. Well, the flag did go up late. I think the assistant referee was waiting to see if Fazrul Nawaz was going to make a movement through the ball and get involved in the play. So going back to that game against Haogang, it was a, a performance completely incredible when you think what's happened to them since that Haogang. Formed on discipline and high press and not giving Albrex any time on the ball. And what we saw with that opening goal for the Japanese, so it was the complete opposite of that directive Philip Orr gave to Haogang that saw them get very close to taking something from that game at Albrax's home ground, which if you've never been there, it's worth an experience. They get so many Japanese expats there. Oh, that was a really important intervention by Madu. Mustafik pops it up in the air, and it's going to come to another white shirt. Flicked on to Hoshino, the leading goal scorer in the league now. 
He's not going to add to his tally of eight goals this season with a shot like that. But again, they're creating space. They're looking dangerous. And already 10 minutes in, if I told you, Duncan, that I would put a gun to your head and you had to tell me who would be the next goal scorer or next team to score, it would be a man in white you'd be picking, wouldn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Because they've been so on top after the goal. They were on top before this. And they've just gone on a different level now with so much confidence. And we've been building this up as the biggest game so far of the season in the Singapore Premier League. But Tampines Rovers just haven't got the memo yet. They haven't turned up. They haven't had any intensity in their play so far. Body language for me is not exactly right either, Duncan, is it? Now, uh, we talked a bit about fasting yesterday. Of course, we've got a team here in Alberic's uh, Nagata. I don't know if Adam Swandy's a, a, a faster, but he's obviously not playing. Presumably more than half of this. Oh, Magumi's through here. Oh, he's been pinged for the foul. Referee's not seen it. And I tell you what, Fazal now as will be delighted the referee's not seen it because if dearie me Faz, Fazal now has wasn't to know there that that had been flagged as a foul I'm not sure whether the referee saw the flag had just played on but this is a shocking miss an absolutely shocking miss well that is the lack of game time playing its part for Fazal now has been playing second fiddle to Cairo Amri in the Tempest Rose forward line but as a striker when you're in front of goal and when your team needs you to put the ball away you need to be more clinical than did, that. Did the referee see the flag there? Would that have been pulled back or was the referee happy to let them play? I don't think the referee saw the flag on that occasion. Well, perhaps the assistant referee was flagging for a Tempest Rovers foul and the assistant referee was flagging for a Tempest Rovers foul. Oh, that's picked up at pace by Shamir. And given away at a much slower pace. Here's Yamazaki. The young Lions played Albrecht in midweek. 3-1 that one finished. Albrecht's played a very defensive mindset though in that. Far more defensive than Tampanese have well, at least attempted to set up here. But no matter how you set up, Duncan, when you're not enjoying possession, you end up being pushed back into your own final third. And that, to a certain extent, is what's happening here. Encouraging though that Magumi did get some space, albeit might not have counted even if Fasrul had finished. Well, the front three that we were talking about before the game have not really turned up yet. Magumi with that opportunity to set up Fazunawas, but no service for the front line. And that's because the Albirax Nigata have been so on top. They've not given the ball to Tampines Rovers. And when Tampines Rovers do win the ball back, they've just not used the possession wisely. I think I'm right in saying that's the first time Tampines Rovers have conceded the first goal in the game since the opening game of the season when Albrex beat them 2-1. They certainly made a fist of it in the second half in that charity shield game at the National Stadium. So they have that fresh in their minds, but at risk of sounding and stating the obvious, you fancy they need to score next here. Madu over the top. Magumi's got pace. We know that. He might just get to this, you know, Magumi. Magumi up against Takahashi. Magumi inside. Delightful ball. Finds Jordan Webb. Jordan Webb tries to get the shot away. And he was marshaled well by Yamazaki. Good opportunity and good understanding between Magumi and Webb. Well, positive play from Magumi and Jordan Webb. Pleasing to see that Tamish Rovers are making their way into the Elberex penalty area, but didn't get a clean shot away. I hope this is what we want to see from Tamish Rovers, taking the game to Elberex Nigata. Well, that was an ambitious first time ball, and then Yamanaka fouls Mustavich. And then there's a little bit of afters. Mustavich, a tap on the back for Ryuro Yamanaka. Well, this is a tactic from Tamish Rovers. They know, they've seen that once you get in the face of Elberex Nigata, they tend to react, and we saw that with Kenya Takahashi against Nazu Nazari. Yeah, Mustafic stood up there almost trying to goad him into having a bit of afters, but on that occasion, he was alive to it. Not necessarily the same with Takahashi after that controversial incident against Tower Gang when even Philip Ora was speaking to him in the game that you missed a couple of weeks ago, Duncan, before the match, just before I interviewed him, and he was still bemoaning his side's luck that he was still on the field. That's football, though. Who's to say someone else wouldn't have stepped up and scored what was a sensational free kick? Mr. Vick goes long. He's looking for Fazrul. And Fazrul does well there to force the hurry clearance from Sasha Hara. Bit of urgency needed by Tampanese now. Quarter of an hour gone. They trail by a goal to nil. That goal scored. 
in the eighth minute by Yamanaka. Took over the top. Oh, that might come through. Charge for 1-1. They've hit the crossbar. Fazal Nawaz, well, they don't make defensive mistakes like that too often. And I hate to say it, Duncan, but Fazal Nawaz has been given two really good opportunities now. And I know that hit the crossbar, but he's missed both of them. And you cannot beat Albrecht's missing chances that are given to you like that. Well, first of all, it's a corner kick to Tempest Rover. So I'm not sure where that deflection came from. Was it a save from Yosuke Nozawa? But mix up in the Albrecht's Nigata defense. The ball falling to Fazal Nawaz one-on-one. Gets Yosuke Nozawa. The ball was bobbling, but second opportunity for him. First and he doesn't put it away. First corner of the game, it goes to Tabanese. Can they make it pay? Geylang, a Kagure penalty. Speaking of the Japanese thing tonight, it's given Geylang the lead against Warriors at the National Stadium. Can they get a Japanese goal scorer, Tabanese? No. It's a good delivery, but headed away. Somewhat surprised Tanapi let that go back out. He's now going to presumably muster up a long throw. Do they have a long throw merch? Well, they team? do have, and that man is the guy who has. His first start of the season, Madhu Mohana, and one of the longest throws in Singapore football. So that is going to be a weapon for them in this game. Well, Daniel Bennett's alive to that. He's on the same page as you, Duncan. He's going right up to the edge of the six-yard box. I fancy the plan is for Bennett to flick this on, and maybe Jordan Webb. Oh, well, happy to get on the end of it. They've been up so long for Madhu. We've lost sides of him. He's back into range now. Madhu. Went to Mustafic, he dummied a long throw. I've never seen that before. It's worked out though. Madhu's got some space. What's the cross like? It's not good. Madhu back to Mustafic. They've got to stay on side here. Be so careful with the timing of the run. Better from Tampanese, but now they've got to be a wife. Oh, that's naughty. Madhu's going to get a booking for this all day long. First yellow card and entirely warranted. Duncan Elias. Well, two players on the ground. Yamanaka and Taku Morinaga. Injured as well, and that is a cynical foul from Ooh. Madhu Mohana. Now Mr. Fitch getting involved. He might end up showing a card to the skipper if he's not careful. I mean, how can Mr. Fitch be protesting about that yellow card? It's a yellow card every day of the week and twice on Sundays. Well, I think he's just trying to put pressure on the referee. Probably not a bad tactic. Obviously, it's a very youthful Japanese side here. Singapore outfit have the edge of them in terms of experience. How important will that Fajrul Nawaz miss be in the final reckoning of this one? Off the crossbar. He did miss one earlier, but I've got a feeling that would have been brought back if it had gone in. But that was Giltesh. And I can't remember this season Albrecht's coughing up a chance like that through a pure defensive error. Well, exactly. But the good news is that Tempest Rovers are making chances against Albrecht's Negata. So it was a sloppy start from them, but they do have the quality when they're in the mood to create chances and put them away. So goals across both the games in the Singapore Premier League Sunday kickoffs tonight. Kagure going to be a test of the Warriors. They're another team that have been struggling after expecting big things this season. Meanwhile, we're finally back underway here. The free kick goes the way of Albrex. Delivered very long indeed by Takahashi. He's got a boot on him, hasn't he? Flick on his miss, but it might still come to Morinaga. I'm getting my Morinagas and my Morias is confused, I think, in this early stage. Got to keep an eye on that. Oh, that's well stolen. And the break is on for the Stags. They've got numbers forward. It comes out to Jordan Webb, who looks for Magumi. <coughs> Magumi, still going. He has to check his run there, because he would have been offside. Now he has to check the run of Jordan Webb. Still Magumi. They're struggling to get it off him at the moment. Now Hanapi. Oh, it's all of a sudden got very lethargic. Just didn't... Have the same wavelength as a couple of those runs, Magumi, that were ahead of him. Mustafik. Magumi. He's got Hanapi inside. Goes back to Mustafik. Now Hanapi wants it over the top. And he timed that run to perfection. The ball, though, just waited a little bit too hard. And it's out for a goal kick. Better from the Stags, Duncan. Better from the Stags. But Magumi, he was looking for options. Ufatmi and Fazuna was were making the runs. But they were just making the wrong runs. And Jürgen Rapp really upset. Not at... Uh, Ryotaro Magumi, but at the runs that the players were making, they weren't really giving him good options, and that's why he had to slow down play. He's such an exciting player, isn't it, M Magumi? When he's on the ball, he does seem like he's going to create well, something for the Stags. The biggest color you could pay to him is he wouldn't look out of place in this Albrecht Nagata side, would he? And that's a side, I know it's not the same team that have won the league in terms of personnel two years in a row, but they're obviously a long way towards winning it this year. 
And he's a standout for Tampanese with all due respect to Jordan Webb. I take Magumi over Jordan Webb in terms of consistency all day long. So, in fairness, Tampanese have limited Albrecht since that eighth minute Yamanaka opener. Oh, just not the right waiting on that pass. Frustration from Zulfami, I think it is. But I think what you're seeing is Shamir Azik is playing more as a left back in this game. And he has Zulfami at left wing. So a very youthful left side. Oh, look at that run. They could get in behind here. Madu had to be spot on. Remember, on a yellow card as well. Had to be absolutely spot on. He did well there, the Tampanese number two. But having enjoyed some pressure, the last thing Tampanese need now is for Albrecht to score in their next offensive foray. Watoru Morofushi, the skipper with the throw, goes short, it's going to get it back. Magumi knocks it against Morofushi. He does really well to the byline. That's gone out, that's gone out of play, which is just as well from a Tampanese Rovers point of view. Just to confirm your suspicions, it does look like. Is it Shamir playing in that left back role, Duncan? Yeah, Shamir at left back, Zulfatmi at left wing. So they've already appeared to have switched to something resembling a 4 4 2, which of course is the same formation we're looking at when we watch Albrex Nagar. So Daniel Bennett, kind of stags over this up before half time. I get the feeling there's a couple of twists and turns in this game, yeah. don't you? It's not one of these games that we've watched with all due respect to the other matches. Sometimes this season where it's been a little bit dull, even though it sprang into life between the Young Lions and Hao Gang last night. You just get the feeling there's enough quality here to make things happen. Shamir gets it back to Mustafik. Space for Maddo on this near side. Magumi, as always, looking for the run, trying to find the ball. Over the top it goes to Nawaz. Chase on. Nawaz gets there. We'll look for support with Magumi. He finds it. Now as back to Madu, Madu to Magumi, nice from Tampanese this, all very pretty, but can we get the ball in the penalty area? They'll be onside here, you know. Hanapi, surely had to try and get the shot away, the chance has gone. Hanapi though, nice tricks, look at them lining up in the middle. Hanapi's cross is good, headed across again, Magumi, what a save, and it's in! The Stags have levelled it up, 24 minutes to go, and that was a well-worked goal against the best team in the division. We've got game on in our Tampanese hub. Well, fantastic football from Tampanese Rovers. They're not forcing the issue at all. We really waited and being patient with their build-up. Yasi Hanapi with a good clip. Zufami to, Rio, Rio, uh, to Megumi and Fazu Nawas. Well, was he offside? I don't care. I don't think anybody in Tampanese Rovers should will care about that. Probably Sasahara playing him on when the header was made by Megumi. But Johnny on the spot with an easiest finish you will have in his career. I think he was on side and he wasn't going to miss that one. We've got a game on our hands here, folks. We said the next goal would be important. It's gone to Tampanese. And can they not just beat Albrecht but come from behind? They've got the Japanese maestros rattle here. Fazrul Nawaz has missed two cities in the game so far. He couldn't possibly miss that time and he's levelled it up. And Tampanese Rovers deserve that. In the past five minutes, they've shown glimpses of the attacking threat that they have. As you said, Fazru with a couple of chances before this, and finally they made the pressure pay off. Here's Magumi again. Magumi was instrumental in the build up to that goal, and fair play to Hanapi. All about the delivery on the cross that caused the problems. The keeper could get nowhere near it, and it was almost like they were all reluctant to have a go at goal. It was headed back across the face of goal to Magumi, and look at this. More space on the far side now. And Noaz. Was running in to try and get on the end of a cross. It didn't quite work out though. It's all fame you're wearing this distinctive lime green boots. 25 gone. We're all square here. All wrapped up at our Tampanese hub. But we feared the worst, didn't we, after that eight minute opener for Alborex. All of a sudden, the excitement we were feeling in the build up to this game over the last week or so is back on. Magumi, real threat, isn't he? Magumi, he's having an on day today. Plenty of space if they can get it to Sulfami. Jurgen Rabb will be delighted with that goal. Really easy on the eye. 
safe to say, I think these two teams play football in the way it should be played. Attacking wing play the order of the day for both these boys. Chase is on for Hanapi. Comes to Megumi. Oh, he's asked a bit too much of Hanapi there. And the Yamazaki manages to clear. Well, the pick with the head. Well, I agree with your point that both of these sides, they like to play football the right way compared oh. to all the other teams. Speaking of the right way, they found some space down the right-hand side now. It's Moriyasu. Moriyasu up against Ulfami. Moriyasu gets it. Oh, it was left really cleverly by Hiroyoshi Kamata, who gets so far forward so often. He almost plays like a front man at time to time. Well, what you'll what you see is Kamata and Moriyasu just switching positions because both of them have the ability to both play as a right wing, right winger or a right back. So they will switch positions. But Morinaga not reading the dummy from Kamata. Otherwise he was in if he had the right touch. Here's Mustafik to Amaru. Haven't talked about Amaru too much. But all of a sudden, having looked very adventurous early on, I think it's a sign that Tamanese have got under Albrecht's skin. They're being very respectful at the minute. And they've got a run release for Jordan Webb down this left-hand side. They're putting some pressure on Albrecht's at the back. Can they force another mistake? Yes, they can. That's gone out. That'll be a throw to Tampanese. Parallel with the edge of the area. Well, are we seeing Albrecht's Nigata getting a little nervous for the first time this season? Because the passes are not as they are usually. Not Nappy. playing the way they usually play. Gets it to Tulfaimi. Jordan Webb. Jordan Webb has got a real battle on. Oh, he took a chance there. Managed to find Zulfami eventually. That's clever play from Zulfami. Brings in Mustafic. He needs to release quickly and does. Making the return run. And the run was really good as well from Jordan Webb. You can understand his frustration. The ball not weighted right there, Duncan. Well, now there's a couple of occasions that we see Tamis Rovers players making runs from deep and not being tracked by the Albrex Nigata midfielders. It's not the defender's job to track runners from deep. It is the midfielder's job or to communicate with defenders. And... They're finding ways behind the Albrecht's Negata defence. Daniel Bennett up to win a header, which he'll do every day of the week against Morinaga. Here's Megumi, takes it down well. His momentum checked briefly, but Megumi fancies a run on here. And this was the position the first goal came from. Nawaz crosses. And Fazrul's cross, I'm afraid, is a bit like his second shot at an open goal that missed. Well, disappointing. But again, Megumi is very, very much involved in the build-up for Tampines Rovers. Everything seems to be going through him and they need to get him on the ball as much as possible because he is the man that looks very, very dangerous. Reasonable travelling contingent from made the trek from Jurong East to support Albrecht Nagata here. By no stretch their biggest crowd of the season. It was always going to be a suffer early days of the fasting month. These 8.30 kickoffs precluding a lot of children, of course, from attending the Singapore Premier League at this time of year. Oh, they missed the run of Yamanaka there. Now, ping for the foul is Jordan Webb, but he doesn't like it. I'm loving his approach from Tampines Rovers. Really, really aggressive now. They've just woken up in the past few minutes. That's the reason why they got the equaliser. But Jordan Webb is looking on form. Fazrul Nawaz has his goal. Magumi, of course, looking dangerous as ever. They'll just be kicking themselves, Duncan, won't they? That they really fell asleep for that goal. They allowed Albrecht Nagaza to dictate. And since they've said, right, we're not having this anymore, They've been the better side, no question about it. They've been the ones that are more dangerous. They've enjoyed the greater possession. And they've got Albrecht and the guards are used to patiently waiting to swat sides away, panicking that they might not be able to patiently wait because they might be behind in this game sooner rather than later. Now they build again. Plenty of people on the run for this. It's a chase for Morinaga. A chase he's going to win, you know. Morinaga against Shamir. Morinaga. Difficult to take it off him. Gets it back to Ahsoka. Ahsoka's cross. Madu dealt with it well. It comes to Megumi. He's got one man to beat here and then some empty space in front of him. Comes inside. Megumi showing his skills. Nawaz looking for it. Down the flank. He brings in Jordan Webb. Now Megumi takes up a central position. Can they try and play him through? I tell you what, I back Megumi one-on-one -on -one through with a goalkeeper. They win the free kick for the foul on Jordan Webb.
Daniel Bennett over the top. The weight of that's a bit off. Keeper comes. Leases it quickly for Hoshino. Eight goals already this season for the giant Japanese number nine. And he's managed to get the better. Oh, that was Jordan Webb tracking back. Yeah, I was going to check that. They've both got the same boots, and haven't they, Zulfami and Jordan Webb? Both were in line. Guinness. I thought it can't be Jordan Webb back there near the corner flag of his defensive third, but it was. And that oh. maybe is another testament to how much Tampanese know this game is important. Some tired legs out there by the end of it, I'm sure. Yamanaka. I'm going to try and switch play here. Yamazaki, he's got an option in Takahashi to his left. Takahashi. Brings in Yamanaka, the goal scorer. Yamanaka up against Madhu, who's on a yellow, remember. Oh, Yamanaka skinned him alive. Oh, my word, that was a very close call. They've won the corner. Must have it steamed in there, Duncan. You've got to be oh so careful. If that's a bit further infield, penalty could have been beckoning. But the worry is that Yamanaka knows that Madhu Mohana is on a yellow card and he's attacking him at every chance he gets because he knows one missed time tackle from Madhu and Tamis Rovers will be going down to 10 men. Well, Takahashi was the difference maker with a set piece of a different kind in the game against Haogang. The outswing is going to come. Now, they've got the height advantage throughout the 11 Tampanese, but they've got to deal with this. Signal goes up. Takahashi's delivery goes out and comes back in, which is a criminal offence, really, in football, Duncan, isn't it? Well, so frustrating. And you don't understand it. From a dead ball situation, no pressure at all. You have all the time in the world to put in a good delivery and it just goes out of play. Jürgen Rapp still barking instructions. We've seen him, haven't we, on our travels over the last week or so, but at all the Singapore Premier League games, he's an avid follower of the football and taking in the games in person to do his scouting trips. Him and Fandi Ahmed appear to be the managers we see around the grounds most. And he's a thorough gentleman, is Jürgen Rapp, and the man who takes his football very seriously. And I think he'll be pleased, be furious how they conceded that goal so early. He'll be furious here. Oh, he's given a penalty here, I think, you know. What's he given? He's given the foul. Apologies for that false alarm. I thought he might have excused the initial foul by Hoshino. I don't know what I was thinking there, Duncan. I overlooked the foul on the edge of the area. Well, first of all, Tampanese Rovers, I think they are so intent on playing the ball out of defence. Shaswan Buhari with the quick quick Please. goal kick to Amirul Ali. He was taking a chance, taking on his man, you Shuhei Oshino. So careful there, haven't you? I called that one wrong. I apologise. I thought inadvertently the referee had given a penalty for a kick out. It was the foul, but Oshino, but it's just such a shock that you see Tampanese be so careless when they've got these incredible marksmen in front of them. And look at this, they're clean, carved open again. This is like a carbon copy of the first goal at the moment. And Hoshino inches away from being played in. Daniel Bennett does the necessary. And hold on, hold the back page. Magumi's on the charge. Now that's waiting in the middle. Magumi, I think he'll cut inside and try and take a shot himself here. Magumi, can he pull the trigger? Oh, he did so well. He was always just leaning away from it though, wasn't he? I think it was the right option though. There were players in the box, but Fazru was tightly marked. Yase wasn't the best option. And Magumi on the form that he's in. By the way, what a great ball it was from Daniel Bennett to set Magumi away. But on his left foot, as you said, never had the balance right, never set himself correctly. But really encouraging signs for Tamanese that he's getting in those positions and they are scared of him. I don't think I've seen this Alborex back four as scared of a player as they have been of, Mag of Magumi in these opening 35 minutes this season. That's another good ball over the top. It might still come to Hoshino. Danger not cleared yet. Yamanaka, scorer of the first goal is in attendance. Jordan Webb with work to do. If in doubt, give it to Magumi. Hanapi now gets it back to Jordan Webb. This is lovely stuff. Magumi's found again. Waiting for the overlapping run of Hanapi. Jordan Webb, now he's got Hanapi. Jordan Webb might fancy putting the trigger. All playing in, Nawaz. Can Nawaz turn? He gets it back to Hanapi. Hanapi into Magumi. Magumi take two from a shot on the edge of the area. Comes to Hanapi. Oh, one trick too many. Got to be making the goalkeeper make a save in that situation. End-to-end -end stuff, Duncan. Business picking up here at our Tampani sub. Well, I just feel that Tampani's Rovers always are making the extra pass, which is unnecessary. Get a shot away. Test the goalkeeper. Here's Waturi Marafushi. He's been quiet so far. And that's not his greatest ball either. Mr. Fitch in a real tugging battle with Hoshino, which he wins. 
And now, look at the space Jordan Webb's in. He's had to play a hopeful ball more than a meaningful one. Jordan Webb was the off man on there. We've got a great vantage point here. It's so easy when you're watching up here, Duncan. Well, the players obviously don't have the advantage of us of having a, a bird's eye view of everything that's going on. But as we saw, it, so much time and space for Jordan Webb. If Faruddin could have found him. Yamazaki. So important now that Tampanese don't undo all this good work and go behind just before half time. A second goal for Arex now will be an absolute killer. And you've already mentioned in your pre match briefing with the team news, Duncan, limited options on the bench for Tampanese today. So a strong start. Absolutely crucial. Don't want to be chasing a game against Albrecht under any circumstances, let alone with a weakened substitutes bench. Nice touch from Machino. Thought for a minute he played Moranaga in. Clearance is not a good one. And now they're on the drive. Oh, my word, he's dancing through them once again. Shot comes in straight at the keeper. There's a lovely movement from Waturi Morafushi. And luckily for Tampani, straight at Shazwan, who holds well. Well, it just seems that every time Elberex Nigata gets an opportunity or get a shot away, it is from a Tampani Rovers mistake. Yeah, absolutely right. Tampani Rovers have absolutely no one of note to call on from the substitutes bench. Maybe Afik Yunus, but why would you call on a defender? if you're looking for a goal. Besides that, they are really, really struggling. No Safirul, no Shannon Stevens out for the rest of the season. And Hafiz Abu Suja still waiting for his ITC and clearance from Johor, Daryl Takzim, to get started as a Tampanese Rovers player for this season. That's taken a long while, isn't it? Much longer, I'm sure, than the club anticipated. Daniel Bennett, here's a chance. Over the top comes Ulfaimi. Comes inside as well, Ulfaimi. Ria Matura, Magumi wants us in the back stick. Magumi, oh, just... Too far for the outstretched legs of Ria Tura Magumi. Well, Zufami Suzliman is one of the exciting players that you should look out for this season in the Singapore Premier League. I watched him in pre-season and given a chance this season as a Premier League player, as a professional player at the top level, he's really, really living up to the promise shown in him by head coach Jürgen Rapp and a real speedster. So when he is on a one-on-one -on -one and taking on a player, I think more often than not, he will beat his defender for pace. Well, concerns for the first time this season. I think I've seen Yoshinaga Kazuki that animated. Maybe a bit animated in that game against Hagen where it took them over an hour to make the breakthrough. Oh, they're giving it away once more. This isn't Alvarex Nagata. Tampanese Rovers playing through Hanapi was Jordan Webb. And again, well, from the ninth minute on, Tampanese have been the better side. End of story here, Duncan. Well, I, I will keep this, this comment from Philip Au in my ears when he's mentioned about the performance that Haugan put on against Albrecht Negata take the game to them. That's the best way. And Jürgen Rapp did mention that in the pre-match briefing. And that's what Tampanese Rovers are doing. They're taking the game to Albrecht Negata. No fear at all. And they've won another cheap free kick in a decent area. Pinged for the foul, Daiki Asioka. It looks like Albrecht are intent on playing a high line from these free kicks. Six minutes before half-time. You're watching the Singapore Premier League live on 11 Sports. The well, score in the other game, by the way, Gallag International still leading Warriors by a goal to nil. Well, the last time Yase had a free kick from this position, he clipped the ball into the back post for Daniel Bennett. And Daniel Bennett is now taking a position in the back post again. Well, they've had a dress rehearsal. This was exactly the same spot the previous one came in from. And look where Jordan Webb is on the edge of the box, or almost on the edge of the pitch. On the left side now, he's making his way there. So giving an option for Yassi as well. Daniel Bennett's trying to time his run to perfection here. Might come to Madhu. Oh, they've headed it back to Daniel Bennett. That was a bit casual from Daniel Bennett with the opportunity arising. He might get another chance here. Daniel Bennett, he's got to wait for them to get back on side. Well, that's the wing player of a centre-back, isn't it, Duncan? Half an opportunity there. Well, it wasn't really comfortable in that position, Daniel Bennett. But he, did get, he does get... A throw in, and then of course, the weapon that Madhu Mohana has with his long throws. And now this is almost as good as a corner kick as well. The distance he gets with this throw. He's taking his time, Madhu Mohana. He's asking for a towel as well, I think. Is he to wipe his hands yet? Yeah. No, he's asking for a fresh ball. Jurgen Rab pointing instructions out. They've obviously worked on this in training in the week. So can the best laid plans of the training ground come to fruition at our Tampanese hub? Live Sunday night, Singapore Premier League football. Madu with a long throw. Trying to pick out Bennett for the flick on. It's over Bennett's head, but it's flicked on for them by Alvarex Nagata. Comes out to Hanapi. And this might work out for Daniel Bennett. 
Not quite. But still, it's all Tampanis Rovers at the moment. Hanapi finds Daniel Bennett, wants it back. He's onside. Daniel Bennett, charged with getting a cross in. He does just that. Suggestion of handball there. Big shout on the touchline for handball, not so much from the players. And now the free kick goes the way of Albrecht Stegart. This is turning into a fascinating game, Duncan. Well, on first viewing, I did think that it did come off the Albrecht Stegata players' chest. I'm not sure if you have a better look. I think it was just prior to that, wasn't it? Let's no, this is the foul. This was the foul by yeah. Amirul Atli. Let's rewind that. Worth a look, I think, because what was interesting, Duncan, there was huge penalty shouts from the bench and from the stands, but very little for the players. And in that situation, if it was that blatant, you'd expect the players to be up in arms about it. Well, I hate to say it, that the Albarex Nagar to play, wouldn't it just be like them to pop up with a goal before half-time now? Because even though their forays into Tampanese territory have been less frequent than Tampanese into theirs, you could argue they've looked the more dangerous and it's been a bit more hair-raising for Tampanese when they're coming forward. Nazawa, they don't appear to be in any rush here, Albrecht Nagata. I think they might just take this one or scoreline now into half time if you offered it to them. Or are they lulling the Stags into a full sense of security? Here's Daiki Ahsoka. Now it's spread wide. That's another mistake. They've laid it on a plate for Hanapi, who finds Jordan Webb. Jordan Webb with one man to beat, and he beats him. Three yellow shirts in the box for Jordan Webb to aim at. The cross comes in. Now as is there for two. Oh, my word. Has he had some chances in this first half, Duncan? He could have had a hat-trick. Well, I think that was a tougher chance than it looked. He was battling. I think we were Sasahara in the middle. So it was a real battle to just get a hit. Hit it on it. You say that, Duncan. I know what you mean, but... I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh in him. I'll give Fazal now as a break. Obviously, bear in mind, he's all scored one goal. Not many players scored two goals and a half of football against Alvarez. That's a bit of a trivia question for you. When was the last time someone scored two goals and a half of football, the same person, against Alvarez? Norinaga's lurking here. They've got to be very careful. And they're going to win a free kick for the foul on Takahashi. Was the referee pointing for Tempe's Rovers free kick? What's he given there? I think you're right, Duncan. Is well, it is for dangerous play, and I think the reason for that is Yamanaka has put his his head in at such a low level that he's asking the referee to give Madubohana the high foot decision. Yeah, that's a very good call, Duncan. Great analysis there. I think that's exactly what's happened. 90 seconds, plus probably not much time for time and done at the end of the first half. Can Jurgen Rams, Tampanese Rovers, nick a goal to take them in front before half time? They come oh so close. But again, I think. Maybe both teams now fancy putting the queue in the rack and getting into the sheds and working things out for the second half. It's been an absorbing game, this most enjoyable game for me so far of the season, Duncan, with a half gone. And the good news is we've still got 45 minutes to come live on 11 Sports. Magumi, standout player for me in this first half. He's terrified Albrecht whenever he's been in possession. Daniel Bennett to Shamir. Amy was making a run there, but yeah, I think a bit of keep balls being played. Daniel Bennett finds Mr. Fitz. They might have a go with Madu though. Madu's in an advanced position. Magumi's looking for it. Magumi gets it. Magumi inside. Oh, he's played Amaral into a bit of bother. So they go all the way back to the keeper. Just look how fluid Tempe's Rovers are. Jordan Webb popping up on a left back position. Jurgen Rav is fuming on the touchline. That's another poor bit of control. And over the top they go. They've beaten the trap here, have they? Oh, Morinaga has gone for a high hit and hope to try and play in Hoshino. It's still bouncing around dangerously. They've passed it back towards their own goal. What are they doing? It's come out to Morinaga. He can pull the trigger from there. And Daniel Bennett had to step up and stand up very strong indeed. Almost defensive suicide from well, Tampanese Rovers right at the end of the first half. There's still 60 seconds to go. But it looks like we're going to go into the sheds at one apiece in an absorbing game that Albrex Nagata led early. And Tampanese Rovers, well deserved by the way, got back on equal terms. But since that 24th minute equaliser from Fazil Nawaz, no further scoring. And doesn't look like Albrex Nagata intend on trying to score one before half time, or do they? They could pull the wool over everyone's eyes. Morinaga, oh, that's so high and over. <laughs> Took a deflection though, so there will be a corner to the defender before half time. And that wasn't Morinaga, was it? It was 
Hiyashu Kamata, who does tend to come forward at regular intervals. Even he's a little bit taller than Takimura Naga. Trotting over to take this is Takahashi. An interesting look how many players Albrechts have committed forward for this, Duncan. Well, final chance of the half, so why not push everybody forward for this? Yeah, I think they think, and they're probably right, that the halftime whistle will go immediately as this goes out of play. Would this be a disastrous end to the first half of the Stags or what? They have to simply defend an Albrecht's Nagata corner to go in with a respectable 1 1 scoreline. And I tell you what, they were very close to conceding a goal. Very close indeed. Shuhei Hashino missing with the last chance of the half. Duncan, your analysis in 20 seconds. Well, fantastic. The best game of football we've watched so far in the Singapore Premier League. High intensity. And for the first time this season, Tampanese Rovers scaring Albrecht's Nagata. And they have been the better side in this first half. It's the second half you don't want to miss. The Stags won, Albrecht's Nagata won. Can Tampanese come from behind in this one? They've already leveled it up to keep the title race alive. Back in 15 minutes for the second half. Supported by the title sponsors, Great Eastern and Jinbei. A partner in sports, footballs, and Singapore Pools. These sponsors are in Singapore, Fighter, Pull Up Natural Mineral Water, MMI Group, Watt FM, and Watt Singapore. Also, ladies and gentlemen, in up to date with everything in the Singapore Premier League by visiting the website, W. <laughs> Welcome back live to our Tampanese Hub on 11 Sports. It's Singapore Premier League action this Sunday night. Late kickoffs now for the next month with the fasting month upon us. And we are set for a barnstormer of a second 45. Tied at one apiece at half time. Interesting that Albert Snagata really intense coming out of the sheds at half time. Duncan, a big team huddle. Tampanese just mean, moody, focused. Ready to get on with it. I think we're going to get a cracker. I predict a five goal thriller. Well, fantastic. You got me, you got me a bit uh, taken aback by that five goal thriller. You're such a pessimistic, Duncan. Positive things happen to positive thinkers. In all seriousness, no, we've already said it throughout the first half. A great game. Has taken a slide early on with Zulfaimi. Now, Albrecht started reasonably well in the first half. The last thing Tampanese want to do is go behind early in this second. They show plenty of attacking talent going forward. With a fasting month player part as well in the second half. Plenty of imponderables, plenty of questions to be answered. But that first question answered by Mustafic, who heads the corner safely away for a well, throw. Well, Albrecht Negata, they know they are in a game today. The first half has shown as much that Tempest Rovers can cause all sorts of problems when they are in the mood. But it was so sloppy at the beginning of the first half, and Tempest Rovers need to be awake for the entire 45 minutes here and to get reminder, something. That yellow card to Maddo is still fresh in their mind as well. I'm assuming that he's a shrewd coach. Kazuki is going to tell them to bombard that right hand side of Tampanese with plenty of. Attacking flair and wing play to try and goad Maddo into a second yellow. Circumstances like that. Hashino's header. That is a simply sensational goal. Well, just as I was saying it, Duncan, they teased Maddo down the left, left him standing, and that is one of the best headed goals of the season for me. Well, fantastic goal from Hoshino. It was Yamanaka's assist. What a cross that is on the bounce. And Hoshino with a great header. But it was just a quick throw-in. It was so easy for Albrecht Nigata. A quick throw-in. And Madu Mohana was caught. The brilliance of the header for me is that Hoshino's not ideally positioned. He has to lean back to make the contact there. And then has to steer the ball far enough away from Shazwan to beat the keeper. Well, we have our third goal. Are you still laughing at me now with a five-goal through the prediction? Because we've seen Tampanese respond when they conceded the first one. Now we need to see them respond when they conceded their second. Well, it's so disappointing though because they know Albrecht Negata, they were so strong coming out for the first half and they've done the exact same thing in the second half. So sloppy with their defending and they're getting punished because they're so clinical Albrecht Negata. Yes, they were second best in the first half but when you give them a chance, they will take it. Daniel Bennett Find Shamir. Oh, Shamir's giving it straight away here. Worrying signs at the start of the second. Dasuki Ahsoka, that's a great cross. Why on earth did Hashino not try and dive and header that in, Duncan? Oh, was he offside? I don't think so. Looked like that was there for a diving header, didn't it? Let's have a look at the replay. The replay will tell us more. I'm very critical from someone that probably couldn't run from one side of the pitch to the other. 
but nonetheless, that looked to me. We'll try and come back to that in a minute. Meanwhile, they've given it up once more. This is a disastrous start to the second half for Tampanese. Aided and abetted there by a miscontrol from Kamata. Let's have a look at this. I'm not able to look back at it, unfortunately, at the moment. It's flicked on. Oh, Hanapi. For a moment, I thought he played it back into trouble. But they're being penned back early. This is what they're going to try and do now. Player Magumi, what a sound offensive header that was. We know what Kenya Takahashi can do coming forward. That was a vital intervention, Duncan. Well, I think this is a game that we will see Kenya Takahashi come of age because, as you said, we know his capability going forward. Let's but have a look at this. Sorry, Duncan, to drop you off. Just so we get a chance. I don't know why he didn't go for that. Hoshino. I think that's a bit harsh. I think that the ball was too far ahead and he wouldn't have reached it anyway. Okay, I'll take you away for it. You're the expert, buddy. Meanwhile, Murafushi driving through the middle of the field. They've got options out on this right-hand side. They find Moriyasu. Moriyasu, nice little dink. Well played, Daniel Bennett. They've won that well now. Fazrul, space for Jordan Webb. Magumi wants. Jordan Webb finds him. Pinpoint pass. Now, can Magumi return the favour and get this back to Jordan Webb? Or can he go himself? Magumi to the touchline. Crosses it in. Important intervention. It's still not clear. Comes out to the edge of the box. And an happy shot is blocked. Very early on, but encouraging signs that Tampanese can still breach this Albrecht's defence when they get forward, out wide and in space. Well, this is exactly the same thing that happened in the first half. After the goal, Tampanese Rovers then woke up from their slumber and then started taking the game to Albrecht's Negata. It's the exact same thing now. They've gone to one down. Why can't you just play the entire 45 minutes, come out firing, and then you wouldn't put yourself in this situation? They're going to press now. They can't give Albrecht's time to play themselves out from trouble at the back. Hoshino is going to be in a foot race with Daniel Bennett and the ball, which he's going to lose. Daniel Bennett gets it back to the keeper, who one assumes is going to find at the earliest opportunity Shamir, who's in plenty of space on the left for Albrecht. Shamir now, he can bring it further forward, looking for the run ahead of him. I've given him some stick, but Fazlul Nawaz, to be fair to him, is making plenty of movement off the ball, as is Yassi Hinapi. I think he's been a royal Trojan. We just hope they don't pay the price for this in the latter stages of the game. The first game as well, and you talk about Albrecht's playing three games in eight days now, Duncan, but you've got to remember, Tampanese haven't played for 18 days, is it now? I mean, that's a long break between games to keep sharp. Well, exactly, and I don't think they've played any friendly matches. It's all been about training, all about recovering. They had a brutal schedule before that, but a bit too long, two weeks, almost three weeks without a game, and maybe rustiness will play a part. But in the matches, you talk about Albrecht's Negata having a lot of matches to play. They, they Have they had to play out of fourth gear, third gear in most of their matches because they've been strolling to victory in most of their matches. It's a very good point, Duncan. I think the Young Lions game in midweek probably a, an example of that. Never really tested. The goal that Young Lions got was the last kick of the game and they're already 3-0 down. Morinaga, the diminutive figure up there with Hashina, the little and large act has worked well for them all season, Albrex Nagata. And Hashino, does he fancy another goal with his head? Daniel Bennett is literally hugging him at the edge of the area. Headed away by Amaral. Flicked on by Hanapi. Now Shamir. They're playing themselves into bother once more here. And they're going to come away with this Albert Snagar to look at the run of Morinaga. Oh, he went for goal himself. Oshino takes the deflection. First corner of the second half goes to the Japanese outfit. Well, again, it is all of Tampanese Rovers doing. They're getting themselves into all sorts of trouble. They played that one quickly. Should be an easy take in for Shazwan. But they've got to get their groove back on here, Tampanese. The free-flowing football of the first half. But a distant memory, they've had that one foray into Albrecht's territory in the first minutes, minutes of the second half. Now, of course, they've got to come from behind. That's more by luck than judgment's going to find its way through to Nazrul. Hanapi is dispossessed unfairly in the eyes of the referee. Marafushi pinged. Got to see some urgency in Tampanese now. I know the clock's still on their side with 39 minutes, but again, we were talking about this, Duncan, as we walked down for a half-time cup of tea and a slice of cake, that a draw really is not any good to Tampanese. I know obviously it's better than a, a loss, that goes without saying, but at this stage of the season, even as early as it is, they've got to start taking maximum points off all sides, and obviously against a side like Albrecht, who they need to try and close down, winning the points themselves is important as taking them up Albrecht's. Well, are they going to get a better opportunity to beat Albrex Negata at home here at our Tampanese hub? Jordan Webb out to Madu. Madu's not got many options. They'll have to go back to Jordan Webb. Magumi looking for it in front, but again, they're not going anywhere in a hurry here. 
Madu now Jordan makes the move that frees up some space for Magumi Magumi gets the ball caught under his feet just temporarily comes to Amaral Amaral to Madu great job that they've done here Albrecht of closing the danger down they've got to go all the way back to Mustafic and the old favorite Mustavich to Bennett so no joy down the right how about trying down the left so Faimi wants it'll come to Shamir first Shamir now bypassing so Faimi and they give up the free kick for the foul on Riku Moriyasu that was a little bit naughty from Hanapi he might have been booked if he'd have been managed to get his foot on that it was no more than a yard away never mind ten So impressed by that Hashino goal. The technique to finish a header like that. And that's the difference between the sides at the moment. Hashino just a couple of minutes after half time. What a clinical Alvarez Negata, and they have Hoshino. Oh, great flick on. What a flick on that is. Pressure for Daniel Bennett dealt with well with Yamanaka lurking. Well, I was just about to say, will any would have any other player in the league been able to score a goal like that? Here is Takahashi. He's already created one goal. Takahashi, cross the face, keeper spills it. Luckily for Tabani, straight to Mustafic, who should clear. Doesn't clear very far or very well, though. And they can come again. Building through the back through Yamazaki. Yamazaki to Ahsoka. Back to Yamazaki. Need a runner somewhere now, Alberex. Look at this. Look at this, absolutely carving them to pieces. Look at this, Hoshino should have scored. Well, you just cannot allow them to dance through you like that, Duncan. Well, Tempest Rovers, I don't know what's going on in their defence. No one putting a tackle in, no one tracking. Murafushi, why isn't anyone going, either midfielder or defender, putting their foot in and making a decision to go and tackle Murafushi? Tell you what, I think if Hoshino leaves that, it's a simple finish as well for Hiroyoshi Kamata, who, having... Been able to watch where the keeper was committing himself for the expected Hoshino effort, could have picked his spot. Anyway, still an open game. Still, you think more goals in this, Duncan, wouldn't you say, with 35 minutes to go? Well, I think more goals definitely, but we did say the last time out that it did look like Albrecht would get the next goal. It was Tampanese, and let's hope that's the case as well. Throwing goes the way of Albrecht, much to the disappointment of Madu. Looking down at the technical areas, we can see our I say a whole host, there's only three of them warming up the Tampani subs with a fitness coach. I suppose if the fasting does come into play, I'll have to pull the trigger on a substitution at some stage. This was the scoreline between the two sides. Oh, Moranaga has got the better of Daniel Bennett there. And they're on side here. And look at the run at the back stick. All over the place, the Tampanese should have been number three once more. Well, they're being carved open at will now, Duncan. This is really worrying. The energy level from Tampanese has dropped dramatically since the half. Well, it was Yamanaka, I think, was with a marauding run down the wing. Morinaga coming in late, just not able to get a contact, but it is all Elberex Nigata at this point, and I fear for Tampines Rovers because they've just not recovered from the shock of going 2-1 down. And it's a serious point, actually. This fasting month situation is going to play, as if Elberex Nigata needed any more help, it's going to play into the hands in every game they play for the next three and a half weeks. Well, the truth of the matter is, they have two Muslim boys in their ranks and that is Shahul Ryan the goalkeeper and Adam, and Adam Swandi who's injured that was a bit of a cheap attempt to win a free kick for my money Hoshino is going to let Daniel Bennett hang himself with this by letting it bounce Bennett knows you can't let balls like that bounce but he's lucky to get a free kick not sure what for that's a criminal offence a centre back letting a ball like that bounce isn't it Doug it's I'm very unlike Daniel Bennett as well so yeah he's usually so rock solid in the air that was definitely a push in the back there on Zulfaimi. The crowd are getting into this now. It's just getting a little bit edgy. Well, I'm not going to name names, but there has been a feeling and a few Tempest Rovers officials came up to me early on and they've been telling me that they feel like Albrecht Nigata have been getting the decisions in every single match this season. And they pointed to various uh, incidents in various matches that the referees have given the benefit of the doubt to Albrecht Nigata. Where is that? Because, I mean, that's an old argument that used to be said back home in the UK with Manchester United years ago. Is that because arguably they play the better football, so people are resorting to fouling them more? I mean, it's a... Do you believe that, Trudy Duncan? You're telling me you're not going to name names, which is rather wimpish of you. But are you telling me you actually subscribe to that theory? Because I, I see how brave I am. I know the names that you're not going to mention, and I'm going to go down and tell those names after the game that I think they're wrong. 
Do you, do you really? Do you I think they're wrong? I do think they're wrong. I think they're the best footballing side in the competition. I think it's inevitable. And listen, who could not? We talked about how, gang. What was the, the, the big talking point over the last couple of weeks is the red card that wasn't for Takahashi against yep. how, gang. Now, let's talk about how, gang. What was the one thing they did in that game that we said stood them in good stead? They got more physical. Yep. They got in their faces. If you're going to do that, you're going to get blown up for more fouls. That's what football's about. It is a contact sport to an extent. Well, also the game that Albrecht played against Warriors FC where a last minute, and it was a blatant handball in the area, wasn't given by the referee as well. Yeah, well. And there's a reason why the FAS came out with uh, a but statement to I say that they're monitoring the, the refereeing in the matches so far. And if they didn't believe it, they would have come out with a statement. Well, I can't believe that. I and mean, listen, if you're going to be talking about skullduggery, surely they want to be biased against Albrecht to try and even the league up to make it more exciting. Mustafic, Jordan Webber stayed on side, decent control, Jordan Webb lays it off to Hanapi, Hanapi out wide to Zulfaimi, Zulfaimi, there's some yellow shirts in the area here, Zulfaimi still going, Zulfaimi chips it across, and where was the yellow shirt attacking that beautiful ball in from Zulfaimi? And to make matters worse, Marafushi just glides it out of play to find Morinaga, and just like this, it's going to be two on two at the back. The marauding run down the left-hand side is coming. Hoshino waits at the back stick. They go for goal and it just whistles past the post. Oh, so close to goal number three. They could have scored five in this second half already. On this occasion, Yamanaka close to his second, Duncan. Well, I didn't see the ceremony, but I think Yamanaka has been given the freedom of our Tampanese hat because every time he's looking for a run, he gets the ball and receives it. And all, all the time in the world to cut in and get a shot away and just not on target. But Elbrex Nigata, with so much space, I'm sure it's given Jurgen Rab a coronary down there how open this game is. But it makes for exciting stuff. I mean, let's be honest, Duncan. We're honest people, I like to think. Probably you more than me. But we have seen some pretty poor games in the Singapore Premier League to this point. This is not one of them. Certainly a game that's keeping you on the edge of your seat. Even though Alberts Nagata are in control at the minute. We've already seen evidence that Tampanis can turn it on. We've just seen... Zulfaimi. And that's the one encouraging thing for Tampanis. Early on it was all Magumi. Now Jordan Webb, Zulfaimi. All managing to make an impact here. But it should lead to more goals because Tamanese have to go for the win. So they desperately need an equaliser before they can concern themselves about that. That's an interesting ball over the top for Fazrul to chase. He loses the foot race. It comes to Murafushi who gives it up. Here's some space for Amaral. And that's another free kick this time with a foul on Jordan Webb. And it's going to be the first yellow card shown. To a man in a white shirt, it goes to Daiki Osaka. Right decision, Duncan? Right decision. Great turn by, by Jordan Webb. And if he did get control of that, he was true on goal to set somebody up. Great use of the body by Webb. I don't think it was a yellow card itself, but by the sheer amount of fouls that he's given away, right decision in the end. What can they fashion from this? Yasser Hanapi. Well, it's going to be a change first for Tampanese Rovers and well, Madhu Mohana. It's Madhu, who's on the yellow card, remember? Replaced by Afik, which was the change you suggested might be the first one they went to. And I think it makes sense bearing in mind the yellow card. But have they got anyone else that can deliver the long throw, Duncan? Well, no, they don't. But Madhu hasn't really done many of the long throws. He's been going short with all the opportunities he's had. But good decision by Jürgen Rapp. He's seen that Madhu was struggling, he's obviously not match fit as well, having not played much football this season, on a yellow, why risk him getting sent off, and I think you know, a more than capable replacement. And Appy's delivery is a good one, they've got to stay on side and they do, comes out to Daniel Bennett, not the first time that's happened, Daniel Bennett being caught out wide, that's a good cross from Bennett, headed up, surely no, comes out to the edge of the area, they wanted a founded Albrecht, they didn't get it, and they survive a little scare, so more evidence that the goal scoring is not over in this one. Decent ball in that was, wasn't it? Again, they almost tried to have too many touches across the face of goal before someone tried to take a shot. Murafushi has a look round. He's tracking back with Amaral. Amaral back to Shazwan. And now as we enter the final 28 minutes, the time and the clock does start to become a factor for Tampanese. Never a great time to concede a goal, but if you are going to concede one, at least concede one early in the second half, so you've got the whole of the second stanza to make it up. Decent turn from Fazrul. Finds Magumi. Magumi, great time for Magumi, and he's done it! Magumi, the Japanese stag, scores against Albrecht Nagata, and we're locked at two each. 
And Duncan, is that a five goal thriller I see before me? Well, fantastic piece of skill by Real Tara Magumi. You have to give credit for Fazrul Nawas for picking him up, for holding the ball well and sending the ball to Magumi on the right. Here we have a lovely clip pass to Magumi. He was going to fake the shot, cuts in on his left foot and not the cleanest of strikes, but enough to beat Yosuke Nozawa and 2-2. Two -two. Well, maybe a five-goal driller. I tell you what, Yasuki Nozawa will be having nightmares about that one later on. That was a shot he should have saved. And listen, I gave Fazrul now as plenty of clog in the first half with some poor misses. He atoned for all that there. That was even better than his goal, the assist he laid on for Magumi there. Well, a goal and an assist so far for him. And what more do you want from your striker? Well, fair play to Fazrul Nawaz. That was beautiful. And now we have to see if Alvarez can respond again. But knowing then they probably will. Driving through the heart of the... Tampanese midfield is Rika Moriyasu. And he gets the shot away. There's Watafura Marafushi. Well, I, think, I think this match is all about which attack will score more goals right now because both defences have really been shocking so far. No one really doing well defensively. I think it's about which team is going to score more goals than the other. And that's why I think maybe a right, a five goal thriller, maybe two more goals in this game even. A six goal thriller, says Duncan. He always has to outdo me, doesn't he? It's like it's some kind of competition, Duncan. We're all on the same team here. We're all on the 11 sports team. You're just trying to make me say seven, aren't you? In all seriousness, no. 26 minutes to go. We've got an absolutely cracking finish here. Galang 2-0. I'm hearing... For my executive assistant, Naz. Second goal scorer, Naz, for Gaynor. Cheryl Anwar. Don't look at me like that when I said you're my assistant. Meanwhile, Alvarez to guard to Hashino. Great save. Comes out for the rebound. And there's no mistake. The fifth goal comes just two minutes after Tabani's leveled it up. And it's that Jan Yamanaka again, Duncan. Well, Hoshino can find himself unlucky for not putting the ball into the back of the net. Great work from the front man. But Yamanaka reacting well to the rebound. And flashing a shot straight to goal. Some quality strikes we've seen today. Great strike by Hoshino. And Yamanaka on the rebound. Keeps the ball low and beats Shaswan Buhari. And now Rex in the lead for the third time today. Yamanaka on a hat trick now. And we get the fifth goal. Slightly earlier than I feared we might. And 25 minutes to go. Answers on a postcard. How many are we going to see in this one? Are we seeing definite signs that Tambanese are tiring here as well, Duncan? Well, they've been making mistakes the entire match in defence, so... Oh, my word, that was a really close call as well. Did well to get it away, Sazwan, in the end. And Albrecht's look hungry for more here, don't they? This isn't going to be a game like the Young Lions one where they're going to take their foot off the gas. I think they're trying to make a statement here tonight. Well, exactly, and coming to the team that finished runners-up to you and blowing them away on their own patch, that's a huge statement from Albrecht's Negata. We've had three goals in the first 20 minutes of the second half here. Albrex have led now three times. Tampanese have pegged them back twice. Have they got it in the locker to do it a third time? Well, if they switch the ball to Zulfatli on the left here, they have an, uh, a chance for him to go one-on-one. -on -one. Space out on this left-hand side for Zulfaimi, but... Albrecht Nagar to anticipate it brilliantly. Nice flick over the top. Should be tidied up by Amaru. And no pressure on Shazwan, who releases Mr. Pitch straight away. Over the top looking for Fazrul. There is a very happy coach in Yoshinaga Kazuki. I say very happy, Duncan. They're in the lead, but I'm sure he'll be a bit concerned how they've been carved open. Admittedly, less frequently than they've done it to Tampanese, but they have been under an awful amount of pressure. And on a more clinical day, Tampanese could still be leading in this game, even though they've conceded three. Well, he's never happy because he's always expecting perfection from his team. Even with eight wins from eight matches, he still thinks there's so much more improvement from his side, which is scary. Well, Magumi, scorer of the second equaliser. Crucial, surely, Brengerman, he's a player that isn't fasting, that Magumi has a really strong 23 final minutes in this one. 
Look at the runs coming all over the place from Alvarex. It's impossible to track all of them. And the versatility, Duncan, of so many of their players just makes them very difficult to defend against. There's no point going man-to-man -man with these guys. You'll be dragged all over four corners of the park. Well, exactly. And that's the, the, the difficulty for the defenders of Tampines Rovers. Do they follow the man? Do they leave him and give them all the space in the world? By the way, Yamanaka is making some great runs down the left. Of course, we have it. We have talking about Tampines Rovers from a Singapore point of view. For him, is a chance now to prove himself with Adam Swanee injured. Great tackle from Amaral on the break. Can he release Fazrul? Yes, he can. Can the support get there for Fazrul? Not yet. Jordan Webb on the overlap. He finds Jordan Webb. Magumi waits in the middle. Jordan Webb. Oh, surely the time to put the cross in was then. He's delayed it. The momentum might have been lost here. Will he try and get in the box? He will. Pulls it back to Zulfaimi. Zulfaimi pulls the trigger. A brave block from Hiroyoshi Kamata. And the danger is gone for now. But still the stags come forward. Noticeably tiring for me as Fazrul now as he's trotting back to get onside. Ball comes from Afik, the substitute. Nice play once more from Magumi. He's been Tampanese's best player for me. Duncan, would you concur with that? Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, they've coughed it up once more. And look at this. Watch the run of Hoshino. Oh, he wanted it off Marafushi just then, Hoshino. But I think if you're an Albrecht Nagata manager or coach or player now, you've got to think, hold on a second. Yes, we're in front. Yes, we look like we could score more. But we've got to be careful here because we can't keep giving this lead away and taking it back. Well, they're just trying to slow down the, the pace of the game now. Play it to their own pace. I know Tammy's River are trying to quicken things up. Of course, they're chasing the game. But Morofushi just putting his foot on the ball, slowing things down. Strong header from Mustafik. And that was well won in the air from Fazrul, who wins the free kick. Yeah, I gave him some stick in the first half with some sitters miss, but I was delighted with him with that assist for Magumi. Really smart stuff from Fazrul who's playing the understudy in the central striking role today. They thought about having a tug on Zulfaimi. Zulfaimi to the byline. Pops up nicely for Nazawa. Well, Zulfaimi, I think, should have released the ball a little earlier, trying to take that extra touch to beat his defender, but the opportunity was there for, to put him, for him to put in a quick cross. Just going back to the two Tampanese goals, this hasn't been Nazawa's finest hour, is it, today? I think he's going to be criticised in the aftermath of the second Megumi goal. Just dribbled past him in the end, didn't it? Whether he slipped over or was wrong-footed. I think a bit harsh to, to blame him for the first goal. Well, no, the, in, the initial save on the first yeah. goal just went straight back out. I know it's a big ask. I'm being very picky. I'm a, I'm a hard taskmaster, Duncan. I do apologise. <laughs> Albrecht Nagata now doing their best to take the fizz out of this game. Bit of how's your father what's to do with... Um, the substitute of Fik. I think Afik is has blood on his on his shirt or on his face, and Hoshino just pointing it out to the referee that he needs to go off to receive treatment. Hopefully, they won't take very long. They're all taking it. Incredible that all the Albrex players are taking water. Most of the Tampanese players aren't fussed, and most of them, mine assumes, has been fasting. Just getting that blood cleared away from the nose. Good spot, Duncan. So we tick round to 19 minutes to go here at our Tampani sub. Have Alvarex now soaked up the best that Tampanese have to offer. Acres of space in this near side for Riku Mariashu. Riku Mariashu, more space. Oh, he didn't expect it to come through. Did he, Marafushi? Might not matter. Straight at the keeper, Shrazwan, smart save. That was an absolute bullet for the hat-trick for Yamanaka. Well, he's a man full on confidence at this moment. Mustafik, he killed the atmosphere in the stadium as well, bizarrely, for a game that's been so exciting. You can hear a pin drop downstairs. Meanwhile, they're still playing with 10 Tampanese. Afik. Well, like five people gathering around him, trying, trying to figure out how to stop the bleeding. Put a plaster on it and throw him back out there. Meanwhile, Zulfaimi. They're playing with 10, but Tampani's coming forward, trying to level this up for a third time. 
Jordan Ware, fair play, he stepped up to the plate again tonight. Difficult with so many injuries, so many men missing that suspension for Kyron Amri, key as well. You can't help but think, mind you, again, he's not had a disastrous game, has he, Fazrul Nawaz? Meanwhile, here they come with Hanapi. Hanapi looks up, can he find Fazrul? He can't, but he can get it back to Amaral, whose shot is blocked. In my country, again, take two for Amaral. Looks to get it out to Fazrul. Fazrul, header in over the bar from Amaral, and the chance goes begging. 17 minutes now to play, Duncan. Well, they might be playing with 10 men, but Tempest Rovers now really bringing the game to Alberex Negata. It's good to see such positive play from them. Fazrul with the cross to Amiru Ali. Just a little too much for him to reach it and get a good connection on it. Good news for Tambanese is Afik is looks like he's ready to come back on. Well, the fourth official not allowing him to come on. Not happy with the blood still. Yeah, well, he looks like he was trying to trot back on. And the fourth official said no. This is all that... They need Tambanese now. They're defending with a back three and only playing with ten men. Let's have a look at this. Does it appear to be... Is that on his cheek, is it? Maybe it's a cut on his cheek. Well, well, just put some Vaseline on it, I think, and just send him out. I'm not sure what the issue is. Is Vaseline your answer to everything, Duncan? Most of the time. Jordan Webb. Continuing to impress down this left, like Megumi is down the right. He's really hassling and hurrying Riku Moriyasu up. Well, the referee... Uh, They've uh, given the throw to Alvarex there. That's Jürgen incredible. Rapp, look at Jürgen Rapp. He's going absolutely potty. That is incredible. Well, I think he's been overruled, the referee, by the fourth official well, there. Listen, fair play to the referee for changing his mind. And that's all what I will say. He made a mistake, and at least he changed the decision. And that was incredible. Mustafik. Rapidly approaching the final quarter hour. And still they're only playing with 10. They've got to get Hafik patched up. What on earth is going on? He's got a plaster on his cheek now. Fourth official, is he happy now? I think he is. They'll try and bring Hafik back on. Down the flank it goes. Hanapi, another one who's had a good game today. It seems strange now they're training 3-2 to say so many players have played well. But they've stepped up. In difficult circumstances, injuries, suspensions, fasting month, playing the best team by quite some distance in Singapore at the moment. And it looks tragedy like it's going to be on the wrong end of a scoreline, but they've not hit today, Tampanese. They've stood up and have been counted. Daniel Bennett. Then it comes to Sulfaimi, who wanted it back. Canapi. Um, out there looking for it, but the danger could come now. They're going to be onside here. It's all about Amaral's pace. And Daniel Bennett has lost Toshino. Might not need him. Great save. Shazwan keeps the Stags alive with 15 to play. Should have been a goal though, Duncan. Well, Yamanaka, brilliant stuff. Really, really flying at the moment. Really playing with so much confidence. One-on-one -on -one against Amirul Ali. Got the step over right. Got the shot away by Shazwan. More than equal to it. But now it's Tembis Rovers on the attack. Zofaimi down the left. Numbers in the middle. Zofaimi might not need them. Does he fancy going alone? Oh, he does! Zulvaimi picked that one out and we're tied at three each with 15 to play. Hold the back page of the Straits Times. The title race ain't over yet, baby. Well, fantastic counter-attack from Tampanese Rovers. Shazwan Buhari doing so well to save his team. And now the counter for Zulfami cuts in on his favourite right foot. And are you Iron Robin in disguise? Zulfami Susliman with a strike straight in the top corner of the post and a well-deserved Equaliser, Tampanese Rovers really deserving that. Well, quite frankly, where did that come from, Zulfaimi? We're tied at three each. And typical Duncan, he's called it right. A six-goal thriller. Any advances on six? It's a goal fest at OTH. And even more impressive was that Tampanese Rovers got an equaliser when they were down to ten men. I think Yuno's just back. Onto the pitch now. Well, this game has really swung well, momentum for both sides. Now, Duncan. He's all over the tactics board, Yashinaga Kazuki. But to be fair to the coach there, there's no guarding against that. That's probably the one goal we've seen scored today that's just pure individual brilliance. Well, fantastic. And Zufatmi using his pace. And we, well, if those people who haven't heard of him before today, well, they'll certainly know about him and his right foot after today's game. And are we going to find a winner here in the last 13 minutes? Mustafik. Oh, they've given it back. 
Now's the time for Tampanese Rovers to seize the day. Three times they've trailed, three times they've clawed back, and are they about to trail for a fourth time? What a save, Shazwan! That man has made three sensational saves in the last five minutes, and he might have to make another one shortly because there's a free kick in a dangerous position for Alborex. Well, Kenya Takahashi with the nutmeg, and one on one with Shazwan Buhari. What a save by the goalkeeper. That is fantastic. That has saved his side from defeat if they go on to avoid defeat here. But now it's a free kick in a dangerous position for Alborex Nigata. Well, what a game we've been treated to here. Game of the season so far, Duncan. By any shadow of a doubt, it's lived up to its billing tonight. But they've now got to try and prevent a set piece. And here's from Inner Territory because we all saw Takahashi at Jurong East two weeks ago score from similar range. A little bit further, more central, I think, when he scored against Taogang. But we know he can hit them from here and it's, it's, his, it's on his right foot to do so, isn't it? He can hit this with his left. Shazwan stepped up twice in the last five minutes. He may need to step up a third time here. The clock ticks round to 68 and a half minutes, 78 and a half minutes at our Tambanese hub. Takahashi along the deck. And that's well defended by Daniel Bennett, who stood up strong in the face of Hashino trying to get a bite of that cherry. Well, such disappointing delivery from Takahashi. We were expecting so much better, especially after his goal against Haogang United. And Hoshino still talking to Afik Yunos about that cut on his face. Hanapi. Anywhere will do. Tries to find Fazro. who got a nice touch there. Thought for a minute he'd get it past Kaishu Yamazaki, but nothing doing. And now they come forward once more with Shuhai Sashahara. Space, but too much on that ball for the man out on the far side. And our Tampani sub is now getting ready for another substitution. And talk us with this change, Duncan Shamir, to be replaced by Faisal Rafi. Well, Faisal Rafi, I was watching the pre-season game between Tampines Rovers and Gela International and he had a really, really bad injury. I think it was his arm. He fractured his arm. So it's really good to see him back in action. And a very talented player coming from the Prime League last season and now an opportunity for first-team football. Replacing Shamir Azik, who's done decent in this game, playing in his unnatural position of left-back, but has done enough. Ten minutes for either side to find a winner. Is it going to happen, Duncan? Well, I would favour Tampines Rovers at this point. I think the momentum is with them. You can talk about the fasting man and the players and the lack of players on the bench. But at this point, the momentum is with them. Well, nine minutes to find a winner here. Jordan Webb. Oh, Jordan Webb's been caught out there. Could get carded for the... Oh, my goodness, it's gone against him. Well, I thought... He'd have a little dig at Morinaga there. Now the change from Alvarex. Rayoro Yamanaka. Or oh, Hiriyashi Kamata it is to make way. And in his stead comes Riyaturo Shibanoki. Well, Moriyasu will be the right back. And Shibanoki more of a right midfielder. Tampanese, it's Megumi. Megumi to put the Stags in the lead. He's only gone and done it. Flag is He's up. Only Flag, is up. Oh, Flag no. is up. Flag is up. Oh, Duncan, you spoil all my fun. I cannot believe that. I thought for all the world it was the dream goal. So did the public address man. Well, there was somebody in front of Yosuke Nozawa and I think it was interfering with play. If you can Here's get a replay, replay of that. Well, I think it was Fazro who was in an offside position. Well, was he interfering with play there? I don't there, think though? he was. Well... They'll talk about that one, I'm sure, in the post-match analysis, which will probably take about three hours. This game's had so much in it. Duncan Elias, remember, after the game, we're getting all the post-match reaction. 
Well, did he get Jürgen a touch? Rab, did he get a touch? If he has, Jurgen Rab's going to be furious because he don't think he needed to. The substitute, Shibanoki. They've won a corner here, and oh my word, is it looking ominous all of a sudden? There's the Japanese coach looking at his watch, Yoshinaga Kazuki. It's a long, long time since Alvarex Nagata lost a game of football in the Singapore Premier League, Duncan. It's never happened in the Singapore Premier League. They have lost a game last season in the S League, but it's quite some time ago. They've got to defend this corner, Tampanese. Cannot, simply cannot go behind once more. Riku Moriyasu. You can hear the Albrecht supporters, they want more. They want more goals here. Can their team oblige? It's been their toughest test of the season so far, but there's still time for the champs to edge back in front. Decent corner, met by a header. That's got to be a foul, surely, off the line, but it wouldn't have counted. Well, Morinaga, he's always standing in front of the goalkeeper on every set piece, just trying to pick up the scraps, and he almost got the better of Shazam Buhari there. But just impeding the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper's always going to get the advantage in those situations. What a game of football we've been treated to here. And we've still got the best part of six minutes plus stoppage time to come to enjoy more of it. We've been promoing this for the last two weeks on 11 Sports, and I hope you joined us and have not been disappointed. But absolute cracker of a game. That well, was Hoshino uh, trying to find. As you said, Patrick, the best game of the season so far. It's kind of test for Shazwan. Has to get a big delivery here. The flick on's on if Hanapi can get to it. Oh. <laughs> Won the flick on Fazwell, but Hanapi not quick enough to get on the end of it. And it goes through to Nazawa. And how ironic would it be if Alberex Nagata's first game they don't win this season is just the kind of result Tampanese Rovers didn't really want. They've won eight from eight. Are they about to drop points for the first time this season? Or is there one final twist in what's already been a six-goal thriller? The last time that Albrecht Nagata didn't win a game of Singapore top-flight football was back in September last year when they were held 1-1 away at Home United. Can that man, Jurgen Rab, conjure a seventh goal on the night and a fourth for Tampanese to give the Stags a precious three points. So on the evidence of what we've seen from them today, let's get it right, Duncan. If they could steal this, there's enough in this squad and enough about them to go on and maybe challenge Albrecht. They only were eight points behind last season. He's added again. So find me into the box. Drugs it back. Oh, straight into the hands of Nozawa. Well, I would say the nearest challenger to Albrecht Nigata this season is Tamish Rovers and Brunei DPM and both of them Level on points, great turn of pace from Zulfatmi. I tell you what, what kind of confidence is Zulfatmi going to get out of a game like this, Duncan? A world-class goal like that. He looks to have a spring in his step, fasting month or no fasting month. I see Oka, there's always the nagging doubt that there's another goal in this game. Driving into the box. Oof, not a million miles away. Heart in mouth time, very briefly, as not for the first time today, Marafushi drives to the edge of the area and pulls the trigger. <laughs> Nervous looks from both coaches, Yoshinaga, Kazuki and Jurgen Rab of Tampanese, both pacing up and down their technical areas now. Bennett was a great flick on. Held up brilliantly by Fazrul. Finds Hanapi out on the left. Hanapi with two men to beat. Falls over. And now we're having a game of wheelbarrows, apparently. The free kick, though, goes the way of Tampanese. Now, I think you've just got to send Mustafic up here. I know it seems reckless. I don't think it's in Jurgen Rab's DNA. Three minutes to go. You may as well, in the terms of the context of the title race, Duncan, Albrecht simply aren't going to jump enough points if you don't take them off them. Well, as you said, if Tampanese Rovers do win all their games in hand, they'll be five points behind Albrecht Negata. So, do they really need to force the issue? Is a point 
still yeah, enough for that's them. That's a very good point, Duncan. Maybe I'm letting my exuberance get the better of me. You've got a much more sensible football head on. Well, listen to the ovation for this man. Zulfaimi is going to be replaced by Shah Sharian. What a goal he scored. I tell you what, Duncan, if there's a goal of the week on your 11 Facebook page segment that's not that one, I'll be amazed. Delivered in by Hanapi. Could drop anywhere. Almost came to Daniel Bennett. Edge of the area. The shot comes in. is blocked. Still the danger's there. Magumi's cross. Oh, Mustafic getting in a confusion. With the substitute, I think it was. I thought it was Fazrul and Mustafic getting each other's way. Yeah, it was Fazrul. Apologies, Duncan. You're right. Well, it's Albrecht all of a sudden hanging on. That's straight through. To Nazawa though. Oh my word, this doesn't look good. Great work, Jordan Webb. And calm as you like. Amaral deals with it. Can't think there'll be too much time added on for stoppages, Duncan. Four max, I would have thought. Well, four minutes is enough. I think with all the substitutes that have been made. I do, st I do feel that there will be one more goal still left in this game. I think you might be right. I get that vibe as well. Here's Takahashi. Goes down looking for the free kick. Nothing doing. It's two on two if they get possession here, Tampanese. They don't know. It's brought away by Moriyasu. Well, I can't wait to hear Jurgen Rapp's thoughts on that disallowed goal from Agumi that would have made it 4-3. Wasn't an overly amount of protest, was there, from the Tampanese players? As Magumi still got petrol in the tank to put some pressure on Suhai Sashara, or indeed the keeper. Fazul Nawaz. Inside the final 30 seconds of the 90, all eyes now turning towards the board that will tell us how much will be added on for stoppages. Oh, there's some space here. I see Oka might pull the trigger! Well, I have literally seen it all now. The coach of Albrex Nagata is on the floor, literally on the floor. And bang on, literally bang on the 90 minutes. Daiki Ahsoka, they held off him, they held off him, they held off him. And with apologies to Zolfaimi, that's an even better finish than the goal that brought Tampanese level. What a stunning strike from Daiki Ahsoka. I think that's full 35 meters out all the time in the world to pick his spot. But still, the technique to get that right into the top corner, no blame attached to Shazwan Buhari, even from a shot from that distance. Fantastic technique, fantastic goal, and what a way to win a football match. I don't think anyone was stopping that. Hassan Sunny even. Shazwan has made some sensational saves tonight. We've had seven goals. We could have had 14, and that's no exaggeration. There's still time for an equaliser, by the way. There's also still time for Alborex to get a fifth. And I can't wait. I, for one, Duncan, I'm really looking forward to your post-match reactions here because we've literally seen one of the great Singapore league games, certainly in recent years. Well, both teams playing football in the right way, both going forward, both trying to score goals. And if every Singapore Premier League game was like this, we'd be having a lot more people coming to the turnstiles. Well, this will go down as a classic, as a Singapore Premier League classic, and that's for sure. Two of the top teams, we built it up, and it has certainly lived up to expectations. Both sides can be applauded for their efforts today. Both fantastic efforts from both sets of players. Play on, says the referee. Hanapi. Hanging tough. Look at the Halbrechts. I think they still want a fifth, you know. None of this playing in the corner flag for the team from Japan. We've had two world-class goals, a seesaw battle. They've led four times Albrecht's Nagata. On three of those occasions, Tampanese have pegged them back. Tampanese had a goal to go 4-3 in front that was disallowed controversially. We all thought, well, I did. I got very carried away. That Megumi... They've given the Stags the edge, but the flag was up, spotted by Duncan. And as football writes its 
history in script so often. There was a sting in the tail for Tampanese, and that sting in the tail was one of the goals of the season for Daiki Asioka. In this great, innovative, modern football stadium here at our Tampanese hub, we've seen one for the ages, and the scoring might not be over yet. It's come out to Hoshino. I think the fight's out of Tampanese now. And now they do go down the corner flag. And that's going to be a free kick. And I think we're now going to see a little bit of corner flag action as Albrecht Nagata make another change. Talk us through this one, Duncan. Just a time waster, surely. Well, just a time waster, but two goals to his name and both fantastic strikes. Yamanaka will go off with a huge round of applause. And I tell you how good this game is. Duncan usually leaves me about 85 minutes to go down and do his post-match interviews. Even he can't take his eyes off it. He doesn't want to go down the stairs and miss any of the action. And I, for one, don't blame him. Well, they're just going to knock this to each other for about a minute. And that might just be that. They want the corner. They're going to get a throw instead to Tampanese. Is there time to charge one last attack towards the Albrecht's Nagata goal? I fear there isn't. But take nothing for granted in this game. Now the whistle's going out from the Albrecht's Nagata faithful. They want the final whistle blown. And they may be very well about to get their wish. Is there time for Shazwan to launch it forward for one last desperate effort from Tampanese Rovers? I think that answers that question. It's not going to happen. It's not going to be Tampanese Rovers night. But rest assured, they've played their part in what has been one of the games of the season or any season for that matter so far. Our referee, Fahad bin Mohammed, blows for full time. But if we're sounding a bit resigned in our tones in the commentary box, Duncan, that's because I think in our heart of hearts we now know that any team, oh, never mind Tampanese, never mind Ballastir, oh, never mind Home United, are going to have any hope now of reading in Albrecht's Nagata, who now, when you look at the Singapore Premier League League table, with this win today, are now 14 points clear of Ballastir Cows, having played exactly the same number of games, and now 17 clear of Tampanese with three games in hand. Well, for a team like Tampanese Rovers to put in such a performance against Albrecht and Gaza, and they really took the performance to Albrecht, and for them to come away with absolutely nothing, I think that's a worrying sign for the Singapore Premier League, because how do you stop Albrecht and Gaza? This is as close as they have come to being beaten, and they still come away, 4-3 winners against Tampanese Rovers. Are you going downstairs to get some interviews now, Duncan? Great stuff. Duncan leads me now to go downstairs and hopefully hear from all the headline makers in what has been a seven-goal thriller here at our Tampanese hub. The story of the game, if you're just joining us, is simply astonishing. Albrecht Nagata, quick out the blocks to take a 1-0 lead. Tampanese pegged it back just before half-time for one each. And then Albrecht, seconds after the restart, went 2-1 in front. Magumi with a leveller to make it 2-2. Then Yamanaka with his second made it 3-2. An equaliser of the highest quality from Zufali made it 3 each before an absolute screamer from Daiki Asioka gave Albrecht Nagata the edge in a seven-goal thriller. It's finished. Tampanese Rovers 3, Albrecht Nagata 4.